There's something called the Five Eyes Alliance, which is an intelligence sharing agreement between the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Now, during the Second World War, the UK and the US were sharing intelligence about the Nazis. They had an agreement called Brusa, which allowed them to exchange personnel and gave both countries rules on handling classified information. And that agreement was working out so well for them that they carried it on after the war with the originally titled UK-USA Agreement. In fact, the agreement was working out so well for the intelligence agencies that it expanded to include three parts of the Queen's Commonwealth, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. And there you have it, the Five Eyes Alliance was born. It was supposed to help with the sharing of intelligence on the Soviet Union and China, but it's not always been used for that. The Five Eyes set up a system called Echelon. It's what's called a signals intelligence sharing system. Now in a nutshell, Echelon was a project to share wiretap phone conversations, satellite information, and eventually fiber optic communications. It's rumored that the project dates back to 1971, although obviously it would have been developing as new technologies do. In fact, nobody's 100% sure who it even targets or how often, because it's so highly classified. In fact, when politicians started asking about it in 1999, the UK and the US both denied that it existed. And they still do today, even though Australia and New Zealand have admitted it does. And it's now thought to be an automated global spying network capable of listening in to every single phone call or reading every email around the world. We've known that this system exists since at least the year 2000, but there was a BBC documentary by a guy called Duncan Campbell that came out in 1987 and it was brought up then. Now he had a source inside this site in Menworth Hill in North Yorkshire. His work revealed it to be part of the Echelon system. The weird spherical structures are known as radomes and that's where the snooping happens. And back then they were capable of making two million intercepts every single hour. They looked out for keywords and message patterns trying to uncover terrorist plots or cross-border crimes, and any communications flagged would be passed on to intelligence analysts. That base was linked to the headquarters of the US National Security Agency and GCHQ. And it wasn't the only base. The Five Eyes Alliance had listening posts all over the world. Now, even in 1999, when these politicians were asking their questions, there were concerns that the power these listening posts gave the intelligence agencies could be quite easily abused, maybe by spying on individuals or giving information to certain companies so that they could have an advantage when they were bidding for contracts. Even back then, there were accusations that the NSA and its allies were operating a dragnet system and invading the privacy of American citizens. Now that sounds familiar, right? Because of Edward Snowden's whistle blowing, we've all become aware of the NSA's PRISM and perhaps to a lesser extent, GCHQ's Tempora program. Both of them allowed the agencies to store and analyze vast amounts of data, metadata, emails and so on. The UK's Foreign Secretary, William Hague, has refused to comment on whether or not the information collected by those programs was shared. And the same goes for GCHQ. Then a spokeswoman for the NSA said this, any allegation that NSA relies on its foreign partners to circumvent US law is absolutely false. NSA does not ask its foreign partners to undertake any intelligence activity that the US government would be legally prohibited from undertaking itself. But if all of our intelligence agencies are collecting this information anyway, does the NSA really need to ask for it? What the Five Eyes Alliance and Echelon show us is that for a long, long time, our governments have been able to collect this information and that they have the legal basis to share it. So given that they've extended these dragnet programs so far and wide without any public knowledge, should we believe them when they tell us that they aren't actually sharing this information? 